Hey guys, it's your boy and your pal and your shockingly clueless Linux pundit, Gardner, the Linux gamer. I'm pretty excited about some of this news we got coming out today from the Library of Congress. Um, Motherboard is reporting on this story, uh, as well as PC Gamer and a couple, a couple other outlets. Um, this is really cool. The Library of Congress and the U.S. Copyright Office have issued a final rule, and it adds a couple exemptions to the DMCA. I say a couple, but <laughs> it's 85 pages. And to be a full disclaimer here, I haven't read the whole document yet. I haven't even read much of it. But uh, from what is being reported, this actually seems pretty cool. Now, if you're not familiar, the DMCA is a, uh, is a, is a law here in the United States that um, has been a thorn in the side of security researchers, uh, gamers, and just about anybody that lives on the internet, it's YouTubers especially. I mean, it's a law that has been um, uh, written by corporate committee, it seems, and has been abused and abused and re-abused and abused some more in order to, uh, to enforce these uh, twisted interpretations of copyright and uh, in allowed Apple and John Deere and a lot of these big companies to get away with abusing uh, the end user. See, the ruling applies to smartphones and other smart devices, you know, uh, your appliances that are connected to the Internet of Things, well, that kind of baloney. But also automobiles and tractors and, you know, where John Deere is like notorious for locking out um, farmers from the equipment that they legally and lawfully own from actually being able to uh, modify or, or not modify, but like repair their devices that, you know, it, it locks them into this uh, disgusting closed loop of, uh, you know, authorized first party repair only where they can charge whatever they want without recourse it's baloney so the fact that like now the the library of congress is actually has issued this ruling these exemptions for the dmca it's it's pretty interesting stuff i'm i'm it's, a lot of people are calling this a victory for the right to repair movement and and in a lot of ways i would agree with that Basically, now the language that they've added gives you the right or a, a party you authorize the right to hack the firmware of a device for the purpose of maintenance and or repair. And that's just rad. I mean, we didn't have that right before. Um, and until now, the legal implications of breaking DRM or circumventing, circumventing the technological uh, protection measures have been murky at best and at worst have been flat out illegal. And now what we have here are is some language that actually gives us a little bit of protection from, from what I would consider to be the bad news of DRM. <laughs> now, and this new rule too also provides some legalese to ostensibly protect security researchers as well. And I'll read that for you. Uh, it's pretty interesting. The acting register recommends that the librarian adopt the following exemption. Computer programs where the circumvention is undertaken on a lawfully acquired device or machine on which the computer program operates or is undertaken on a computer, computer system, or computer network on which the computer program operates uh, with the authorization of the owner or operator of such computer, computer system, or computer network solely for the purpose of good faith security research and does not violate any applicable law, including without limitation the computer fraud and act. Uh, and Abuse Act of 1986. Uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's legalese, but basically what it's saying there is uh, that you or someone you authorize is allowed to carry out good faith security research uh, on a computer system you own. And basically, well, I think what that's saying is that you're allowed to poke and prod and uh, kind of see if you can open up a computer program that's running on a computer that you own. It's, if you own the computer program and the computer. I mean, that, that seemed like a great thing. And, and, and there's also some cool language in here about video games, right? When the copyright owner or its authorized representative has ceased to provide access to an, an external computer server necessary to facilitate an authentication process to enable gameplay, copying or modifying of the computer program to restore access to the game for personal local gameplay on a personal computer or 
video game console that's now an exemption, right? So you're now able to crack uh, an online game where the servers have been uh, discontinued, or you're able to uh, break the DRM in a game that has always online DRM requirements. As long as those games have been uh, discontinued or the servers that authorize them have been discontinued, that's awesome as far as I'm concerned. But this also makes me wonder, like, is this going to spur a uh, an arms race, a DRM arms race, if you will, where, you know, Apple or John Deere or Microsoft are going to uh, see this ruling and be like, all right, we need to create unhackable DRM. We need to lock down this black box and make it impenetrable. And I know that there's no such thing as an unhackable system, but like, you know, the Xbox 360 to this day is still uh, this pretty locked down device. And it's very hard to actually like do anything with it uh, besides what Microsoft wants you to do. And I find that to be a shame. And the same with the, uh, the Microsoft Zune. I loved the Zune. I was a big fan of the Zune. I had an original uh, black Zune model, the original, and it was great. And I loved it, but you know, I couldn't do the things that I actually wanted to do with it. And that was most unfortunate. And to this day, my Zune is still a locked down box and I can't do anything with it. And it sucks because we have the right to do this. So the question now is why do we allow companies to actually lock down devices. The question is, how come Apple and Microsoft and John Deere are allowed to implement DRM in the first place? You know, the DMCA gives them the right to do that. But should it? Should these companies be allowed to lock us out of the software and the hardware that we own? No, I don't think they should be able to. And the fact that we've been loud enough and we've been banging on pots and pans and and screaming at the Library of Congress that these protections must be codified and the fact that they've actually done it shows that we can be effective and we can actually make change. The most important thing right now, we're coming up on an election, is to go vote. And I know I'm not going to get political and I'm not going to tell you who to vote for because that's really up to you. But if you believe in the right to repair and you believe that we should be able as, as, a, as, a, as a people to actually own the devices that we purchase, then, then we need to be electing people who actually support that platform. We can affect change and we can make a real difference. If you want to see something happen, If you want to see something changed, go change it. Let's make a difference together. But I want to know what you think. Do you believe in the right to repair? Do you think this is a good first step? Or do you think we need to make actual legislative change? Leave a comment and let me know down below. If you like what I do and you want to see uh, some more of this craziness, head over to twitch.tv slash Zondak. That's X-O-N-D-A-K. There's a link in the description. I try to live stream at least twice a week, but hopefully I'm going to get to three or four times a week going forward. Um, but And if you believe in the work that I do, you can support the show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the Linux gamer. But no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.